It is 10, 11 p.m. on February 20th, 2021. Um, I'm going to state for the record, um, and it is a part of the public record, um, and the various uh, publicly accessible websites associated with the judicial uh, branch entities uh, of concern, that uh, I am, we are approaching a anniversary of a letter I sent to the Supreme Court of the United States as a follow-up to a leave of information in the nature of Quo Ronto, uh, requesting, uh, among other things, consideration of the State Bar of Texas as a communist organization. In the state of Texas, it is against the law to be a member of a communist organization. Now, say what you will about concepts of the various uh, expressions of uh, our rights to political organizing and other constitutional protections. But the letter of the law in the state of Texas is that membership in a communist organization is illegal. There is uh, ample case uh, law and precedent has already been set in defining specifically what qualifies an organization as a communist organization, including uh, via opinions provided by uh, Supreme Court Justice Jackson uh, during the time frame wherein he was evaluating and uh, giving opinions on cases concerning allegations of membership in a communist organization. Now, for the record, I am somebody that uh, has previously identified as a socialist and was actually in a national leadership position of an organization that identified as a democratic socialist organization, as well as uh, provided uh, leadership as a co-chair of a local for that same organization. And regardless of what my political disagreements are with uh, particular policy decisions that were made, uh, I stand behind the fact that I openly identified as a socialist, and I do still believe in a very uh, significant matter of tenets related to historical materialism and concepts of socialism as a part of political praxis. But the legal definition of a communist organization, including as defined, in consideration of the use of violence in order to undermine the democratic process holds in this case. And I believe that right now it is being uh, used as a form of a smokescreen in order to divert attention in connection with very significant crimes. Now I'm going to engage a process here where today, within the last two hours, while I was doing uh, research and other matters, I encountered a article that is actually a speech that was given uh, in connection with a conference of the Workers' Party of America by the person who was then the chairman, James P. Cannon. It is dated for February 20th of 1922, which is, means today is the 99th anniversary of that uh, publication of that speech and I did not know of this previously I was uh, investigating other elements um, in consideration of processes that I was con contemplating and in this specific speech there are uh, demands that are made as part of a conference organizing working people and I believe that some of the demands that were made are actually relevant now and that have constitutional backing in terms of understanding their implications. Now, I understand that James P. Cannon identified as a member of a communist organization, and as a matter of fact, was a leader of a communist organization, and discussed it, even discussed a uh, praxis around considerations of a form of military organization in order to support workers' rights, especially and in the course of a campaign to mobilize the United States for the war effort abroad during World War II. We are in a situation where our alleged leadership has been operating in a effort to intentionally undermine us in terms of actual readiness is a response to acts of war that are being visited upon this country at this time in correlation with policy changes that have exposed us to significant dangers. Not only dangers that could impact our health and well-being, but that in efforts to uh, intentionally engage a process of long-term undermining of our safety and solvency. I mentioned this as well because right now, at this time, 
there is uh, some alterations that are going on to my electronic accounts, which is part of how um, this is uh, information that I am uh, attempting to track. I had said last week uh, that pending a uh, information that had become available to me after the electricity was turned back on and I was able to get access to the internet and to media, that the announcement regarding uh, alleged Senator Ted Cruz traveling to Cancun was such that we should have uh, respected the previously existing agreements between the nation, uh, the United States and Mexico, and have supported a move for uh, Mexico to take Ted Cruz into custody in consideration of potential uh, dangers to the national security of both the United States and Mexico. And then once they underwent their process, uh, we could cooperate with them in terms of how to address that domestically. That did not happen. But if uh, I had been able to uh, engage in an authoritative manner to discuss and to act upon these, there would have been a 72-hour period where he would have been taken into custody, and then other things would have been followed. Right now, at this time, the website for the Office of the Comptroller of Currency allegedly is down for maintenance. The Office of the Comptroller of Currency provides semi-annual risk report, risk assessments, that I have been tracking for several years. In the summer of last year, somebody recapitulated the information that had previously been published in the semi-annual risk assessments from the Office of the Comptroller of Currency. Specifically of note were changes to the manners in which information regarding the maturity or the uh, time frames during which uh, mortgages in the United States were leaving the period of amortization and transitioning into a period of paying on premium. That information was obscured and was recapitulated to instead discuss a propensity and a proliferation of a form of distressed asset when it came to the real estate market. They intentionally inverted the scenario regarding what was going on with the mortgage market relative to how it was represented in the Office of Comptroller of Currency semi-annual risk assessment reports that were available beginning in the summer of 2018 and that included information that uh, was published in 2016 and 2017 as well as 2018. In addition, those reports also discussed trends in the gas and oil sector. A specific concern was the fact that the gas and oil sector had taken out short-term loans, loans that averaged around five years, five to seven years in terms of the length of the loan, and that a great deal of these loans were going to be coming due around the same time that they were going to be uh, in the next level uh, in time frame following the changes regarding the mortgage rates and their leaving of the period of amortization and transitioning into the period of paying on premium. Right now, the information available, I just found an article dated for March 13th of 2020 discussing the specific amounts that are at least right now currently publicly accessible about the payment terms and the repayment terms on these loans. It says a majority of these loans or the uh, major payments don't start coming due until next year. But if I recall correctly, and I have it in my evidence, which I'm not going to look through right now, that the reports that were available through the Office of the Comptroller of Currency discussed how this year, as well as last year, were major years of consideration in regards to the repayments on these loans. The information available now is trying to present a picture or trying to present information about those loans and the repayment terms that is distinctly different from how it was represented by the Office of the Comptroller of Currency when I first encountered those reports in the summer of 2018 and then also had to be uh, considered in uh, regard to what was available last summer in 2020 regarding the Office of the Comptroller of Currency reports. Right now, none of those reports are available. How long has the Office of Comptroller of Currency been maintenancing its website concerning access to the semi-annual risk perspectives regarding information that would be very relevant to transactions that are pending over this weekend? 
It's been one month since the swearing in of the new president. This is a very important time frame in that regard. It's also been a time frame during which allegedly the state of Texas has been dealing with all sorts of uh, emergency requests and needs associated with things that have been happening uh, in conjunction with a, uh, uh, a, 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 a storm. Uh, situation that's impacting uh, the state of Texas in a variety of manners and following a <clears throat> incident involving a gas fa uh, uh, facility in the San Francisco Bay Area, which just so happened, as I found out today, before 5 o'clock p.m., happened during a time frame when the state of Texas was evaluating its state budget for the upcoming year. Now, during the week that that situation happened in San Francisco, the state of Texas was evaluating its budget for next year in consideration specifically of reports regarding the information, reports regarding the uh, dispersal of the federal aid for COVID-19, but also discussing outstanding pension liability in the state of Texas. Now, I've already made a video earlier today, or I've made a notice earlier today, when I found that information on the budget. There's nothing available currently on the Texas State Senate site regarding what happened in the last week, if anything, uh, 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 including whether or not uh, inter operations or uh, functions were interrupted in the last week. My concern is that what's happening is there is another level of risk escalation in a predetermined uh, or rather misleveraged efforts to characterize crime as risk. And this is another period where they are using uh, expropriated uh, capital assets, including human capital assets, including, it may well be the case, assets associated with large private corporate entities that are not a part of the gas and oil sector and that just happen to have their headquarters here in the state of Texas, that they're using people's electronic accounts and uh, things that are available in terms of their uh, 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 beings and being in presence, including potentially their biometric account, ident identifier accounts, as collateral on another major transaction that they have to work. This is something I have been observing the state of Texas doing. Uh, the first time I encountered it was in December of 2019, where they take what would otherwise be publicly accessible mandated for maintaining it as publicly accessible information available on the internet or as part of electronic uh, forms or uh, the electronic interface that is part of uh, reports that they are supposed to be providing to the public and they take it offline long enough to use it as collateral on what? In July of last year, the Supreme Court of Texas had its website and its uh, uh, case filing information down for over a week. I have been tracking that ever since. It was a very, very, very serious matter when the Supreme Court of Texas did that. What's happening right now with the Office of Comptroller of Currency had to take down aspects of its site up to and including the information on the semi-annual risk perspective. I am very concerned that there is another effort for alleged government agents or alleged members of the government who believe that they have the cover of sovereign immunity to misabuse their power in order to engage acts that constitute not only crime, but are potentially engaging in acts of domestic terrorism as a way to try to manipulate other factors. This is a, a real and, and present danger, as one would say. But uh, again, the, I am doing what I can to be attuned to the uh, time frame here. I'm going to post this publicly online and uh, you know, to make this uh, accessible to those who have the capacity to uh, get this information. It is very important 
that this be addressed in a formal and direct manner. This has persisted for several years that I've been actively reporting on in one manner or another. And I uh, hope that whoever is able to get this information is safe tonight. Uh, and it would behoove you to keep track of your electronic accounts during this time frame and to see who has been trying to make them inaccessible or to divert them for illicit purposes. We're no longer in a situation where we can get away with some uh, misrepresentation of plausible deniability regarding the level at which these activities are attempting to coerce us. It is necessary for us to take matters into our own hands and to let them know they're not going to be able to disabuse an illusion that they are acting in an official governmental capacity when it is so blatantly obvious that they have already engaged a process of trying to compromise our well-being and safety in order to help cover up for crime associated with some of the most volatile and some of the most high-risk sectors that exist in our society.